Once upon a time, Lone Druid was an offlane hero. This is how Bulldog first got his start in the pro scene more than 10 years ago. But then this uh, offlane Radiance Rush build fell out of favor and Lone Druid has been a mid lane or carry hero pretty much ever since. With a brief exception, um, when neutral items were first introduced, they didn't have a separate neutral item slot. So eventually you just have all sorts of neutral items littering your fountain and Lone Druid with his 12 slots could pick them all up. But of course it didn't last very long. And it just makes sense for the most part to just play Lone Druid as a carry or a mid laner because the hero is very item dependent, very timing dependent. But nowadays you can get away with being a bit more greedy in the offlane. Uh, also, the fact that the new items that the Lone Druid likes to buy just are very tempo oriented. And so we can now once again play Lone Druid in the offlane. Doesn't mean that this is the only way you can play him. The main role I would say is still mid. Um, but uh, offlane is a, a close contender. So here we're going to see a game of uh, Tundra against Entity from uh, the current uh, Dream League season 23, I think. And we see 33 really buffing up on uh, Iron Branches. He's got six um, Iron Branches on the bear, four on the hero, as well as a set of Tangos, spending all his starting golden Tangos and Branches to get like the maximum level 1 fighting strength. And then he's going to go straight for Defu Blade. Now, I would actually prefer if you also went for a uh, Blightstone. Um, PA also has a Blightstone, just going to go for an Orb of Corrosion here. Uh, so there's like a slight uh, negative synergy there, but uh, still I think a Blightstone is still worth buying on Lone Druid. Um, but the general idea of this build is sound. The idea is that you go for Defu right away because it's an extremely efficient item. But actually, it's one of the most efficient damage items you can buy and also provides you with a slow. So uh, just a perfect first item on Lone Druid. And here they overextend a little bit here and really underestimate the power of uh, 10 Iron Branches. So they get um, first blood here, which is very nice. Unfortunately on 9, but still great. The Steve Rush is um, primarily something you see on offline Lone Druid. You see carry or mid Lone Druid, they typically get uh, treads first and then they get Tifu. Um, but uh, in the offlane, we're not as farmer oriented. Having that early Defu is just uh, super powerful. With this build, you get Defu at around like minute six or seven, and it's just very difficult for most heroes to deal with that. Bowmanial is coming up, and he knows this camp is empty, so he sends over the bear. Uh, you can do this and then also pick up uh, the rune, but here in this uh, case, he's not going to do that because um, he's leaving the rune for the Earth Spirit to pick up uh, in a minute. He's went for the Orb of the Magi first. Most of the time you see Blade of Alacrity first, but you can go for this as well, uh, since you're universally getting damage from both Int and Agi. We don't want to let the bear get too low. If the bear dies, enemy team gets 300 gold, 300 experience. That's uh, basically like a hero killer at this stage of the game. So you never want to feed your bear. So um, resummon uh, early enough that you don't have any danger of the bear dying. At this stage you really don't do very much. Uh, because you're still waiting for your, for your Tifu to finish, you're not actually that strong at this stage. So you're mostly just trying to go for, for the last hit and it nice, and just uh, play the lane calmly until you hit your timing with that Tifu. He keeps the stat items on the hero for now, because the hero is actually going to attack faster at this stage of the game than the bear. Um, but uh, once uh, you actually finish your Tifu, you don't have it on the bear. So if Defu is such a good right-click item, why isn't every right-click hero going for Defu? Um, well, the big reason for that is that Defu doesn't really add any tankiness. It adds, you know, a little bit of armor, but it's not very much. Also, by the way, note how he's uh, picking up uh, the bounty rune now. Always a very worthwhile thing to do. But the bear is already very tanky, so other heroes might go for like a first item, something like a Dragon Lance or Echo Saber to, to bulk up a little bit. The bear doesn't need that, he can just go straight for the damage, and that's why the Defu rush works out so well here. These days, Lark can steal stats from the bat, so you need to be careful not to tank too many hits. Um, but also, by the way, note that he's keeping a skill point open here. And he uses this right here to level up the bat and instantly resummon. Right? Because normally, when your bat's taking damage in the last uh, three seconds, you cannot resummon. But uh, when you level up the bat, what's actually happening internally in the game is that your old bat gets destroyed 
and you create a completely new bear that just happens to have um, the same percent of HP. And um, since this new bear hasn't taken damage yet, you can resummon it instantly. This trick can also be used to, for example, reset the cooldown on uh, Entangling Claws, uh, reset the cooldown on Return, even reset the cooldown on Savage Roar. And you can also use it to debuff anything. Right? Even something undispellable like uh, like Doom can be, uh, in quote-unquote, uh, dispelled by leveling up the bear. Now he's got the Defu and he's instantly going for the aggression. And Slug is not yet level 6, so they actually managed to find him here and secure a kill. And even though this is Slug, right? Slug is one of the most evasive heroes, they can still get, find the kill here with that very early Defu timing. We don't want to do anything too crazy here, right? We're just uh, staying in our lane. We don't really want to roam around the map as a uh, lone druid. It's not that kind of offlaner. Right? Uh, for the most part, offlaners sort of fall into two parts. Either they're like um, uh, space creator initiator type offlaners, or they're aura carriers. And lone druid doesn't really fall into either category. So what you do is you just kind of farming a little bit and you're putting pressure on lanes. You want to put the uh, pressure on this tier 1 tower and you want to farm up, you want to hit your item timers. This is your most important timing, but don't just go around running around the map just because you've got a Defu. Your goal is to push this tower and um, farm in the meanwhile, and then you know, uh, uh, group up with the team and uh, take even more tier 1 towers. And after our Defu, of course, our next item is going to be Treads, um, very efficient boots on, on the bear. You can also go for phase boots, gives you a bit more chase, a bit more mobility, but generally speaking, Trez is going to be uh, the better item, the attack which is very strong on the bear. And since we're going with the um, Difu and uh, Harpoon, we're going to have a lot of uh, catch anyway. So uh, Trez is generally the better option. And here we want to try to find the Warlock. We could have uh, defu a bit earlier, we couldn't, could have gotten that kill earlier. And we just used our ultimate, just got level 8. Or like, just leveled up actually, we're saving a point. Um, but it's not quite enough. Maybe a little bit over aggressive, but they do get the 2 for 1, so it's not uh, all bad. In Saiyan and Offlin, we oftentimes see Lone Druid just max out um, Bear and Spirit Link right away with no points in Savage Draw and True Form if they're feeling safe enough. But as Offlin, you want to be a bit more, more active, so um, we typically see Savage Roar and True Form picked up a, a little earlier than we would in the safe lane and in mid lane. Because uh, Bear and uh, Spirit Link are our farming abilities, whereas uh, Savage Roar and True Form are great for fighting. It's often a great idea to get a wand on uh, on the hero, and sometimes even on the Bear as well, if you have like a very sp spammy lane that you're facing. Uh, but in this game, he doesn't feel the need, there's no real mana burn anywhere in the enemy team not that spammy so it's uh, fine just to skip the wand and just get your item timings a little bit faster next big item we're aiming for is harpoon just a great item on the bear gives us a lot of extra chase potential and makes it much harder to kite the bear which is like the primary problem that spirit bear faces with other sorts of item builds so the, the old like um, desolator mask of madness build is is still um, perfectly viable but this build is just uh, generally a little bit stronger because you can actually chase people and they can't just run away from you um, very easily. Of course you have a little bit less um, objective damage, less building damage, but against heroes you do a huge amount of damage as well as having that, uh, that uh, minus mana which can be quite quite powerful. And here we see uh, um, Lowest down the Slark and we see a kick here. Unfortunately though kicks back the band instead of the, uh, the Slark so that's a bit unfortunate, a um, bit of a mistake from Thompson, and he ends up paying with his life for it. Aside from the Harpoon, you also want to get an Aghanim Shard. Um, usually, ideally, you want to get the Aghanim Shard um, at around when you have like Savage Run maxed out, which is level 16, because you also want a level 15 talent for it. Because um, once you have that, you have a 12 second cooldown on uh, Savage Raw, which makes the Shard extremely strong. So Torment has just recently spawned, and they're just going to do this uh, as two. Um, if you use the ultimate, you can also just solo the Tormentor. Pretty much no matter what uh, item build you go for, with any sort of reasonable item progression, you're going to be able to solo Tormentor if you use the ultimate. Um, but here they were able to do it with two heroes without using the ultimate. And 33 is not really doing anything overly aggressive, right? He's just pretty much farming and enjoying life. They know that really they have the better lake, right? We've got the PA that's going to scale really well. 
and uh, entity them with the more aggressive team right they want to force fights they want to get the no stacks up on legion commander and slark they have the great team fight with like warlock and muerta these really strong team fight supports as well as this uh primal beast of course being quite strong in team fights um so entity in this case they're the aggressors and um so 33 is just uh, playing a bit passive obviously ideally you want to push down these t1 towers but if you're forced to be on the defensive you don't mind going late with like offline laundry because you know for an offline he scales really really well when you tp into a fight though you need to be very careful you need to uh, look at this uh, timer here and then only click uh, return once this timer is below three seconds because what happens here is he did return slightly too fast and so he is not actually going to TP his bear in into the fight, um, which is pretty bad. And that's like a, a common mistake that you can really easily make. Now that he's finished his principal items, Difu, Treads, Harpoon, as well as the Shard on the hero, he's going to get some Wraith Bands. Minute 25 is coming up and then Wraith Bands are going to be incredibly efficient items. So he's going to buy like three or four Wraith Bands. This is just like a really efficient way of, of building the bear. Because in the early game, Wraith Bands, while they are decently efficient, they're not actually as efficient as like a Defu in terms of doing damage. Um, so... I, I think in, in my own games, I've been overbuying Wraith Bands in the early game a little bit. Uh, I think it's actually better just to buy more branches. Um, especially if you're in the off lane. And uh, just get that Defu timing earlier. And um, then you can fill in the Wraith Bands uh, a little bit later. You could also argue that you should get the, the, the Wraith Bands uh, after the Defu and um, before the Harpoo. Maybe that's even more efficient. Um, but the Defu timing is like really, really efficient. All right, they're into Roche now. And this is a very strong Roshan team. What you can do with the Laundry is you can just uh, tank Roshan with uh, your hero. But here in this, uh, in this game, they don't actually really want to force this Roche. They actually want to force a fight. So they start Roche, know the enemy is nearby. And uh, not how he's positioning his, his hero. He's at pretty much maximum leash range here, so this keeps his hero very safe. He doesn't want to get jumped in duel or something like that. Because he's smoked and uh, far away, there's a very low chance of getting dueled. So he's just going to stay here in leash range, and now he's coming in, he's going to use his true form. Uh, never true form too late. Whenever a fight is starting, you just true form. Uh, don't wait for the last second or something. It's a pretty long duration, 40 seconds. And uh, in the fight, you just want to hit whatever you can. Right, don't be uh, too picky, you just uh, hit what you can, whatever is near, and also use the hero to fight as well, unless uh, he's getting low. And um, yeah, the fight goes, goes pretty well. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a TP on the bear. What you want to do sort of, uh, once the mid game starts is you want to always carry a TP on the bear. So when the bear is low like this, you can just TP at home and then return it. Now that he's gotten a couple of Wraith Bands, um, next item is going to be a Disperser. A Disperser is just in general a really, really strong item. The extra Dispel is uh, very nice. Because a lot of the time, Laundry struggles with uh, like uh, disables and slows and such. They can be Dispelled with Disperser. Also, the extra speed and unslowable is uh, incredibly useful. So, Disperser is just a very natural upgrade. Also, also, it works out really well with this build where he has his Wraith Band with an efficient way of filling the slots. And then he's just upgrading the items he already has. So um, this just makes a ton of sense as an extension item. If you don't want to go Disperse, you can also just go for an AC or for a Bash. Others would also be strong options. Here they're going to do the Tormentor. And note that uh, Lone Druid already has a Shard. And he gets Shard. This is a bug that um, they claim to have fixed, but it's not actually fixed. One thing you should do that uh, 33 is not really doing here is whenever you're walking long distances, you want to put your boots on the hero, not on the bear. Because the bear is naturally quite a bit faster than lone druids. So if you put the uh, boots on the hero, you're, they're moving at around the same speed. That's something to keep in mind here. A little bit of extra efficiency. Uh, later on, of course, you can um, buy boots for your hero himself, which... Um, means you no longer need to do this sort of micromanagement um but like be because of this trick of just transferring the boots uh, uh, it's usually okay just not to buy boots on the hero for a pretty long time they're going high ground now and they've got this um, um pa with the aegis so they want to use this and they also have resum on the bear this is very important if you don't have the resum on the bear you cannot do this 
right? Because the bear can, can die quite easily. Uh, so only do this if you have the resummon available. Also, you really should have a TP on the bear here. Because as it is now, you really want to just TP back the bear and then return him so you can go again. Under a smoking behind this uh, Aegis um, PA. So PA is very hard to kill right now. It's with Aegis and the BKB. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to heal up his bear yet. There's no TP. But they do find very nice negation here. And uh, now we're just going to go for the buildings. I should ultimate here. There we go. And uh, just hit uh, the buildings. If enemy heroes come nearby, of course he fights. But um, really, your main purpose here is just to hit the objectives. Because even with this um, uh, Disperser and Harpoon build, um, you're still doing a ton of uh, building damage. Obviously, with uh, Death Soul, you do even more. But still, we can kill buildings really, really fast. So don't chase after people. Just take the buildings instead. And they do indeed uh, get um, the second lane here. And they should now just go back. And unfortunately, though... He's just um, a bit over aggressive here. His uh, ultimate is about to run out. They're trying to force this fight here. This is not a good idea. They should just have backed off. And um, indeed, uh, the bear does die. And they lose a couple of heroes here. Um, Fit three himself. Gets away though. He resummons the bear. Because um, if he dies here, he's going to have a 65 uh, second death time anyway. So you might as well uh, resummon the bear and uh, try to survive. And he does survive here. Um, just barely. He is buying Vlad, which is not really a standard item to buy on Lundruid, but it, it can be okay on offline Lundruid. Um, because it's an item that's going to benefit um, the PA a lot. And it's also actually decent uh, for our bear, because the bear has a lot of um, base damage. Also, the bear is already using his item slots pretty efficiently. It's got the treads, got the harpoon, disperser, and then the very efficient minute 25 wraith bands. If you replace the wraith band with, let's say, a hyperstone, on the way to uh, making an AC. Um, that's great, but it's probably not actually going to improve your fighting as much as having that uh, extra aura from Vlad's. And Vlad's, of course, helps your team as well. Um, so I actually really like this. Uh, don't go for the early Vlad's, though, right? You want to get your, your proper items first, and then you can get something like a Vlad's. You can even get um, something like a uh, solar crest but of course in this case they already have solar crest uh, on the prophet roshan is respawned and um mid laner is still dead so a perfect time to rosh um here in this case skita is tanking it because he's got so much evasion but you can also just tank it with your hero because the bear is going to do enough life so that the hero can stay um more or less um safe and now armor than Aegis and the cheese um they go for the last uh, objectives here. Notice again, he's standing far back with this hero until he uses true form, and then he goes in with the hero as well. And he just like trying to find something now. Please disperse and maybe profitably here against all these slows. And yeah, we just hit whatever is nearest. That's pretty much all you do in fights uh, and sort of decide when you want to use your savage draw. So, for example, now would be a really good time to savage draw because you theorem into you there's still no tp in the bag which is like a really i think uh, uh, the biggest mistake that 33 is making in this game uh, it could have had so many like uh, free heal ups from the fountain they do find the warlock as well and um, that is going to be pretty much um, the end of this game uh, so if you want to try this out in, in your pubs i recommend going for pretty much this exact item build um, only thing I would recommend is maybe a throw in, throwing in a, um, a Blightstone um, early on and um, also think about uh, getting getting Wand. Um, so in safe lane and in mid lane, I recommend anyone who's like um, below maybe like uh, 3k MMR to go for more greedy builds. So specifically talking Maelstrom. Um, but if in the offlane, don't don't go for greedy builds. It's already greedy enough to to pick lone druid, so um, go with um, this kind of build. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and also subscribe to this channel so that you can uh, get all the new lone druid content I am going to be posting. And uh, also, if you want more lone druid content right now, click on one of the videos on the screen and open this building. I'll see you there.